If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know that I've been trying to figure out this fab block thing. Um, I tried to cut a couple out on the plasma table when I first got it in and had kind of mixed results. I could get it flat to about plus or minus an eighth of an inch and um, it just couldn't really improve it past that. These are the first tables that I cut using the plasma table and I've just kind of realized there's some weaknesses with plasma and cutting tab and slot fixtures and jigs and stuff like this so I designed another fab block and got them sent out to a local laser cutter and just got those parts back and they fit up really really slick and we're going to work on putting this thing together and see if we can get it super flat because if this works what I'm going to end up doing is uploading these to the website and sell them um, in one foot increments and ship them out as weld yourself kits across the country so let me know if you guys are interested um, we're going to go through here and put this thing together one piece at a time. So the first thing you want to do is set up a work surface as flat as you can. Um, the best thing that I could figure was to pull out my laser, work up some shim packs to get this table up off the my work surface so I'll have access underneath. And then at the same time, I'm going to shim everything up and shoot it in down to a 16th, which is as good as my tape measure will read. So once you have everything shot in and as flat as possible, the idea here is throw the table top on first and we're going to build this entire assembly upside down. We've got 5 8 holes spaced 2 inch on center and they are perfectly square to each other and ready to go. The plates that make up the gussets and internal structure of the table will come flat on a pallet and first order of business is you're going to want to set your short legs first so you have those uh, tabs are going to fit down into the slot on the table and then you want to show those relief notches on the gussets pointing up so that they'll accept your next pieces. Pretty simple process here. These guys just slide right into place, get them lined up. And this is where having a flat surface to start with will help. And if you guys notice, I haven't even pulled out a beater yet at this point. This whole thing is just slipping together. We built in extra tolerance into all these uh, tab and slot fittings so that you don't really have to fight it. All right, so this is about what your table should look like. Bigger, smaller, same construction. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is draw all these faces down to each other. To make that a little bit smoother, I went ahead and made these little tabs here that we can run all thread through and that'll help me draw everything together nice and tight before I even tack anything up. So here's the idea guys, is you wanna take two pieces of all thread, cut it down to eight inches, get yourself four nuts and one of these plates. You guys can uh, get them off the website or you can fabricate them yourself using a drill press and uh, some common hand tools around the shop, whatever works for you guys. But the principle is the same. You need to draw this entire assembly into itself, tight iron, no light showing through. Everything needs to be tight, tight, tight. Because the theory here is that as long as the laser is perfectly accurate and holds a really tight tolerance, if you draw all the parts up to that laser cut, it's gonna hold the same accuracy and tolerance as the laser it was made with. So that's really the big challenge here is getting everything tight, tight, tight before you do any welding whatsoever. Once you get everything bolted down and tight together, you're going to want to flip over the table and make sure everything is flat before you do any sort of welding. If you notice, I didn't put any sort of heat on the back because I want to prevent any warping throughout this process. Um, and as you guys know, heat can really start peeling stuff around. These bigger tables are a real trick and fairly dangerous to flip around like this, so please be very careful. Uh, if you notice, we kept ourselves out of the pinch. Once you get it flipped over, you need to check for flatness. The best thing I have in the shop is this four foot level, so I basically just move this around and check for daylight. I put the light behind the camera here, so you guys can see any sort of light coming through on the bottom of this level. Uh, it's basically gonna show us any gaps we have and really I'm not seeing any light coming out of the bottom of that level at all so super happy with how this has turned out so once you have everything flat and nice and tight up on the top 
you're going to want to start putting your side panels in. These are a little bit trickier. They do take a little bit of beating. You could flip the table back over and this would be a little bit easier. Since this one's so big and it was so hard to turn over, I'm just doing it right side up. But if you have two little stands that have adjustable height, it makes this a little bit simpler. Kind of take the weight um, off of you so you can free up your hands to, to fit this stuff up. At this point, I haven't really checked for square. It's not super tight, so I'm just tacking in a couple little spots just to hold it together so I can finish putting the rest of these panels on the side. So the whole point of this table is you want a super accurate, super flat, super square, super perfect jig slash assembly surface in your shop. So where this can really go pear shaped quickly is these corners. You want to take a lot of time and focus on getting these corners perfect, square in all three directions. You want to pull square off the tabletop down the side face. Uh, the tabletop down the side face on the other surface and then you want to check 90 between the two vertical faces right here and I really should move that clamp around so I can get a, a better read on that with a square but once you get all three of those where you're not showing any gaps or daylight then you can zip it down but as you see I'm really just fighting hairs here guys I'm I've got less than a 30 second and I just keep pushing and beating and prying around until I'm happy with it because I don't want to have to take out my square again on this table. Anytime I'm on that corner, I basically want to just be able to line up whatever I'm working on to that corner and know that that's 90. So if you notice, I just tacked it as well. I didn't actually weld the whole thing out. Um, I'm just trying to hold it in place while I go ahead and resolve the rest of these big pieces here trying to get everything as close to 90 as possible. And again, just tacking in spots that are easy to get a grinder or a cutoff wheel, just in case I need to peel something off and, and refit it back up. So still, nothing's welded out. We've just put a couple little tacks on the top surface and everything else is held together with bolts. All right, guys, I'm starting to get really excited here. I've got the whole thing um, pretty much mocked up, tacked up, pretty square and super flat. And I think it's about time to start welding this thing. So I've got all of the side panels on now. I used my uh, clever little corner jig here to help hold things in place and keep everything nice and tight. One thing I noticed while doing this is uh, I've got a hole right where these plates line up. So I need to move those to line up with these right here so they miss this. So a few little things to, to clean up on here. But overall, I'm just super impressed with how easily this thing came together. So next steps really are uh, keep working my way down here. And as you go, just got to keep uh, bumping this in. Get it all nice and flush, tight here. Yeah, use your square right here to close up all those gaps. As soon as you got no daylight showing, you can go ahead and nail it right in here. And the idea of these is um, you don't really want to be putting weld on the back because uh, what you can do is if you weld on this side, it'll draw that plate down. And if you weld on this side, it'll draw that plate back the other way. And you could end up with little humps and ripples in here for every spot that you weld. So instead of doing that, we uh, put a little relief notch in these tabs and now you can basically centralize the heat here in these joints and uh, keep the pull even on either side. Um, really next steps here are I'm going to work through and triple check and make sure all of these bolts are tight because I found a couple loose ones. But really this is the last step guys. Just need to work my way through and fill up each one of those spots with some weld and we should be in business after we put some legs on it. 
So I went through one last time and tightened everything up with the impact. And now it's time to just go weld this thing out. Everywhere you have a tabbed connection is everywhere you're going to need a little bit of weld to hold this thing together. Once I get to the edges, every single weld spot, I'm checking for square again and peeling a little bit with the sleever bar. So one thing I like about the open sides on this table is uh, it's really easy to peel stuff around and pry it a little bit in or out and get exactly dead nuts square. Because really, once you lock this thing in, it's gonna be there for the rest of your career, guys. So be patient and chase all the daylight out of these connections. And you're gonna be one happy camper with this sucker. All right guys, that is all she wrote. Um, thing turned out really, really nice. It is definitely less than a 16th over the whole thing. I can't find anything more than uh, really probably a 30 second on this thing which is pretty impressive for uh, 5 foot by 10 foot so this is gonna be the new base of all of my fabrication right here because I don't have anything that's this flat in the shop right now um, I made well the table it's on I shot in last summer and it was um, let's see it dipped about an eighth over eight feet and then I've got this table back here, anyways, it's only about uh, six feet long and just a little small. It's fairly flat, except that the edges are starting to bend down and um, it's starting to dive off around the edge of the whole table. But this guy, on the other hand, right here, is not gonna have that issue. So uh, I realized I have a few little things to work on here, uh, a couple little things to improve. But all in all, this was a raving success. I will have this 5x10 available um, on the website um, if you're watching this video. And the next few weeks, I'm going to be working on more sizes in one foot increments. So I've got the gusset set up in here to be every one foot. So that should make it pretty easy to split it up into different size tables, whatever you guys need. So I'll have uh, more sizes up and available. Gotta love the air dryer. I'll have more sizes up and available in the next few weeks here. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what sizes you guys want or um, what sort of improvements you'd want to see made to this table here. Um, my little addition, there's lots of people that are making these tables. Um, the biggest thing I changed right here was I added these little pass-throughs. And what these are for, you can use your R11 clamp here on the side. Fits right in there. Or you can go ahead and use it for something on the top right here. So I opened up the edges here. So now the perimeter of your table, you can use exactly like a, a regular fab table. You don't need to have all the special um, little doodads and attachments to go in there. Cause I know we're not made of money guys. Um, I'm trying to make the dollar stretch. The whole idea here is um, I think I can save you guys some bucks by uh, having these cut at a local laser guy and uh, shooting them out to you guys. So yeah.